Recently, I came across this post on Reddit. Made four to five JavaScript projects with help from YouTube and Udemy, like weather apps and calculators, but still not able to write JS on my own without help. This is such a common and relatable situation. So, like any responsible citizen of the internet, I scrolled down to see the comments. Best Dressed said, It's okay to get help when you encounter unfamiliar code. But ideally, you want to practice enough so that over time, you won't need to look things up as often. They then gave an analogy. Imagine you're asked to build something. Let's call it X, and you are not sure how to go about it. If you take a step back, you might realize that X is actually a combination of smaller tasks. You might already know how to do each of these smaller tasks individually. So, your challenge becomes connecting them together in a way that makes X work as a whole. For example, those four or five projects you created. Pick the easiest one. Can you look at the project requirements and build it again? Minimizing the amount of help you ask for. That would be a good indicator of your own growth. My Heart Snake Case said, When you watch and follow along, you need to consider that the person in the video has already completed the harder steps, which is the problem-solving aspect. What you are seeing in most cases is their rehearsed performance. They probably coded whatever it is they are showing multiple times, fixed bugs, etc., ready for the performance. The problem-solving element is a key skill that you learn in time. You just need to start your own small projects, and in time, it'll stick because you are now the one completing those more difficult steps, so you're more likely to retain the information. And finally, I saw this OG comment. Start building your own stuff. Think of a project that is beyond a simple to-do list or calculator app. Set your tech stack and start building. Even if everything is going badly and nothing works, keep building. Don't ask AI to write your code. Maybe ask it for advice or to guide you onto the right track, but write the code yourself. Around until it works. And that's what pushed me to make this video. So thank you Sir Toothy for inspiring me. The golden rule to learn anything. Just f*** around until it works. I think people are doing that less and less these days. Before chat GPD, we had Google, YouTube, and blogs, but we had to write our own code, try different solutions, and spend a lot of time debugging and experimenting. Now, we're straight up asking Claude or GPT or V0 to build out the very thing we're trying to create. And yeah, these models can produce decent results that you could even put on your portfolio. But what's the point of that? Are you trying to replace yourself? I get it. It's tempting, but we both know it's not the same as manually typing out the code yourself. When we spent days or weeks building a project, we'd feel this huge sense of pride and accomplishment. It didn't matter if the code was trash or didn't follow any accessibility or coding standards. It was your code. You could write it again, explain your thought process, improve it, and most importantly, you'd be pumped to build new projects for that same dopamine hit. But guess what? When you're just copying AI-generated code and calling it a project, you don't actually learn anything. Plus, you don't get that feeling of pride or fulfillment either. So, your brain doesn't register it as a positive experience, and you lose motivation to tackle bigger or new challenges. Now, let's take this further. Here's the thing about building projects on your own. They don't have to be groundbreaking. Just like the first projects you did. Calculators, weather apps, and to-do lists. They're important because they lay down the foundation. But as you start to move beyond tutorials, it's crucial to keep picking projects that challenge you a little more each time. Let's talk about breaking down big ideas, because that's a skill you develop when you code for real, without a roadmap. Say you want to build something bigger, like a personal finance tracker. You might start by setting up user inputs for income, expenses, and categories. But then you might realize, Hey, I could also add monthly summaries or export data to a spreadsheet. This is where it gets interesting. You're not just following steps. You're starting to think like a developer, adding features, solving problems, and figuring out how to make it all work together. This ability to break down a project into small pieces is one of the most valuable skills you can develop. Another big one, experimenting. Tutorials show you the clean, pre-approved way to do something. But sometimes, you just need to go wild and see what happens. You're not always going to follow best practices. You might fill your code with print statements to track down where it's breaking. Or stack if conditions in ways that make a senior developer cringe. 
But that's fine. Experimenting leads to understanding. Mistakes teach you about the limits and quirks of whatever language you're using. So what happens when you experiment and make mistakes? You get better at debugging. Debugging isn't just fixing something that's broken. It's the process of retracing your steps, understanding what each piece of code is doing, and figuring out where you took a wrong turn. It's like trying to solve a puzzle. And here's a tip. Try talking through your code, literally, saying out loud, Okay, I'm passing this variable here because I need it for this function, can reveal problems you didn't notice before. This process of working through problems on your own is crucial, but sometimes you'll hit a wall. Knowing when to ask AI for guidance versus when to push through on your own is key. Asking for advice, like the OG comment said, is different from asking for a solution. Imagine you're building a real app and get stumped on something specific, like how to search through a list of users. You can ask and get the answer right away. Now you know how to filter a list, but don't just copy-paste. Understand how it works, line by line. Try to do it yourself. Or let's say you're designing responsive cards. You can ask it for the solution. Then you ask to explain the differences or show examples of each in action. But you have to build a bunch of projects and then fail to actually go. I should have used Grid here. Or I bet Flexbox can do this better. These models make everything feel quick and easy, but the reality is, you're trading off depth for speed. Building something is meant to be messy. You should be staring at errors, thinking through why a function isn't returning what you expected. Or spending an hour fixing a feature that'll take users two seconds to use. Or spending way too much time writing CSS, only to realize that the transitions and animations that looked great in Figma actually result in a terrible user experience. That's where the real learning happens. The goal is to be a developer who can build things from scratch. When you figure things out on your own, you're building the skills and confidence to tackle any challenge. That's how real developers are made, not by following scripts, but by learning to create, adapt, and solve problems on their own terms. They f*** around until it works.